You start with uh, Red Fox and your 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 home with your child. Are you straight commission at that point, or is there some kind of salary to get you to? Okay, so it's it's do or die. You got to get out there yeah. and you find those authors. Yep, you got to sell if you want to make any money. You have to you have to place books. So yes, I make um, you know. And an author's contract with an agency is for whatever percent, say 15% commission. And then I make a portion of that and the agency makes a portion of that. So, um, but that's it. You got to sell a book if you want to make any money. So that, that was the other thing is in the very beginning, there was no money. And again, you know, it's a, it's a position of privilege to be able to say, guess what? I'm going to take this risk. And for the next couple of years, I might not make anything. And in fact, that really is, I remember, I remember telling someone that I had heard, telling some, uh, another agent that I had heard that it takes about three years to start earning a living as an agent. And that agent laughed and said, no, it's going to be more like five. <laughs> and um, I have found that that's probably true. Within three years, I was making some money, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't what most grown-up humans would consider living. <laughs> it was like, oh, okay, I, I have contributed some small amount to our household, but. Um, also not paying for daycare is, is useful. Well, yes. When I factored that in, it really was financially for me, not a terrible decision at all. Um, because because I got to be with my kid and that's what I wanted to do. I know not everybody, you know, that's not not to say that that is the choice that everybody needs to make, but for me, that was what I wanted to do. And um, and so when you factor in, yes, the fact that I wasn't paying for childcare, plus, I mean, I basically was already at where I was when I was working in an office, <laughs> when you just zeroed it out. And so anything that I made on top of that felt like um, icing on the cake, really, in those first couple of years. And then, so after three years, I was making a little bit of money. And then, yeah, I would say, um, I would say it's only been in the last um, two-ish two years that I'm like, oh, okay, now, now I earn a living. Now I have a job where I get paid enough to feel okay. <laughs> and that's great. <laughs> Those are pandemic years. Yeah, yeah. You know, strangely, the pandemic um, years have been good to me. Um, I, I, you know, of course, everybody was afraid in the beginning that it was the end of everything. But um, I, you know, I personally had two great work years, um, despite, despite all the challenges. I don't know why. <laughs> I can't. I have no idea why it worked out that way. But um, I, I have a, I have a feeling it's just coincidentally, you know, what I was talking about that thing of momentum of building yourself up to a point where you have a full list where your work is selling, where where your authors are a little bit more established. They're not all um, debut. You know, you're not trying to crack in the door with every single one of them. Um, I, I just happen to sort of hit that critical mass right around the time that the pandemic hit. <laughs> the pandemic is more or less incidental to that. I think so, yeah. Right I think so. And people continued to buy books, you know, publishers continued to acquire and, and, you know, I did like this. <laughs> so, uh, when I chatted with Mark Gottlieb, check the back catalog of steamed audience. It's a conversation well worth your time. Uh, uh -huh. About how a lot of uh, agents got intimidated by the pandemic, like, oh, publishing is going to stop now. Yeah. So I'm just going to pull back and not submit. And he said, well, this was wonderful, a golden opportunity for me because I knew they were out and I could go in and, and, and make the deals. Right. And well, I and I, I found that um, editors were often in, were really in one camp or another. And it, it 100% boils down to childcare, I think. People who had small kids were not able to look at submissions. <laughs> and people who did not have small kids were all over their inbox. They, I mean, you were getting responses, like they were clearing out all of those submissions from, you know, the, the months um, and years leading up to that moment um, and just getting down to like zero inbox. <laughs> and so um, for some people you could submit work and 
be assured of a really fast response um, because I think a lot of people that was the the outlet that they had was to work. Um, for other people, they're still behind and they're still struggling to um, climb back out of this hole that happened when they had their kids at home all day trying to administer their education for them and um, and also work at the same time. You know, it's just. I think it was impossible for a lot of people, but I, but I do think that, um, yeah, you, you saw extremes for sure among editors. Something I personally underestimated, and I think a lot of people tend to, is just how much of an impact having a child is going to make on the rest of your life and how radically your priorities are going to shift. And yeah. I knew conceptually going in, because we, we put it off until we were comfortable enough to say, okay, well, we could yeah. have a child and make sure that the, 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 the child we had had food. So that, right. <laughs> that's a good start. Um, <laughs> But the the moment, oh, oh, never mind. Everything I thought mattered before is now second banana. This, this is a, this is everything. And yeah, I think I don't know why I bring that up, other than to see your shift from editing to literary agents, and also why it would make such a difference during the pandemic for those who are childless, um, who haven't had that experience. You, you don't know until you know. It's one of the few things where I, yeah. I, I find that's true. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, and I feel like. Um, Certainly since the pandemic and, and also kind of going back to the idea of like, you know, how your, how your work life and your life life get all kind of mushed up together and the pandemic did that for kind of everyone. Um, you know, if, if you have kids, the reason you're working is for your kids, you know, every, um, basically everything you're doing is to provide something for them. <laughs> and, um, and then when you're, kind of faced with the situation of trying to do it all at once. It's really, um, it, it's, it's really hard to do. <laughs> it's hard to be a good employee or be a good worker and also be a good parent simultaneously um, because something needs your attention and that means that something else is not going to get it. Um, so yeah, so you have to prioritize. And when you're all cooped up together in a house together all day long, it's really hard, um, hard to figure that out. But of course, I think um, one of the real advantages of at least of being an agent and, and probably to some degree, editors have this, maybe not quite as much, but you know, it, it really is rare that anything that I'm doing is very, very time critical. Um, I mean, occasionally, yes, when I have like an offer, I don't want to wait. I don't want to, um, I don't want to make people wait for me. Um, or, you know, you have a sort of a crisis situation, a, a fire to put out, those things definitely happen. But for the most part, most of what I do could be done at any time of day. So, um, I can, I can work after my kids are in bed, and it doesn't make any difference to the, my output, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I feel like that was the only thing that really, kind of, you know, that, that was how it worked for me anyway, was that I was able to um, let my kids watch a lot of TV <laughs> during the pandemic. <laughs> TV saved us and then I would work after bedtime. And that was, you know, that was kind of how I kept it going. <laughs> Plus maintaining that was one of our top priorities. Absolutely. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs>